to Simpler. We are three pastors, husbands, and fathers on a journey to make life simpler by holding Jesus as the core for every belief and practice. This journey has shaped us to be more like Christ, freed us from the shame of failure, and encouraged us to a deeper love of our Lord and God. We invite you to join us in the discussions that have shaped and continue to shape our lives. So we've been having uh, young adults uh, we've had a couple of students who came from El Dorado because I did a D now out there. So a couple of their older student volunteers came to hang out the past few weeks. And That's it's, cool. And it's funny. I think I already told you this, Micah, but like, it's interesting that the stories that they'll like latch onto. So I tell this story about, about Riley I told her at the 456 before where I couldn't just give her a couple pieces of candy out of the bag. I had to give her the whole thing, mm. the whole thing. And so the whole story wraps around the phrase whole thing. Cause she just kept saying over and over and over again. And they have brought that up every time they've been over. They'll be, That's funny. They'll, I'll get them some food. But hey, do you need anything else? And they'll look at me and they'll go, whole thing. <laughs> That's great. So it's That's funny. Awesome. It's, I need yeah. the whole thing. I need the whole thing. Whole thing. So now, now just because they've remembered it so much, anytime I say whole thing or whatever, whatever I just said towards the beginning of this, I think, oh yeah, there's a story about Riley <laughs> freaking out about Robin's eggs. There, I think that's going to be the next trek I go on of like podcasts and listening to. I think mm. I'm, I think I'm done for now with the, uh, um, <clears throat> like the podcast and stuff on being convincing or like being good with people. Oh yeah. But the next one might be uh, storytelling. Mm -hmm. I want to dive deeper into like, um, I've heard a couple of people say on different podcasts and stuff, talking about comedians, like they're interviewing a comedian, but they're not, them themselves is not a comedian or they are not a comedian themselves. Um, and they'll say how much they love comedians because they can expose the world around them in such a way that makes people realize what they're exposing, but they're doing it by storytelling and they're doing it by telling these jokes or mocking it in such a way where you you're able to reveal the hard truths without being shunned. Like you think about like the, the typical speakers that are trying to share hard truths. May it be someone who's invited by a political group or someone who stands on a soapbox in the middle of a college. Like those people are usually shunned by society. Whereas a comedian is invited in yeah. to mock what they believe or mock what they think and then laugh about it and either, um, I mean, whereas with people who like, like us who are intentional with storytelling and things like that, hopefully to shift the perspective, that's not necessarily on a comedian's mind, but like thinking about this core aspect of the art of comedy and thinking like, okay, people, higher ups who think through within society, who think through these things, they realize that this role is pertinent to force people to think, yeah. or force people to realize. And so taking that social reality, I guess is the best way to say it and saying, okay, how can we manipulate that for the gospel? How can yeah. we use that for the yeah. gospel? So I've, that's something I've been interested in as well. Yeah, I think the art's the same. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Interesting. That's not my culture corner, though. You guys want to go to the PCC? Let's do it. <laughs> Step on over to the PCC. Pierce's culture corner. Uh, this one's all over the place. And it is, I mean, I guess Harry I can't. Potter. Yeah, I guess I can't say that most of my culture corners, I have like a firm, hard, fast idea or thing I'm processing. But this one is literally just. It's a bunch of information going throughout my head that I'm trying to figure out like, okay, how, how can I make a consistent stance? I guess is the way I'm thinking about it. So where it began was I had a couple of dental operations done. First one, I had a lot of pain in my bottom right of my jaw and I could feel something coming out of the gums. I was like, something's wrong back there. My, my first I was, I have mouth cancer. I'm going to die. <laughs> uh, but I was like, I'll have, I'll have a dentist. I'll have a dentist look at this first. And so go there and I go through the whole process that I got to do like new patient imaging and all yeah. the different, I got to go through the whole process. Yeah. I got x-rays. I got to put that thing in my mouth. I got to pose all these different there's ways. Always, there's like one spot when they put it under your tongue and you got to bite. Oh and yeah. yeah, yeah. Like, oh, <laughs> so it it's so pushing all against uh, all the bone. Yep. Yeah. Uh, so I did all of that with his dental assistants and dental hygienists and stuff. And then he comes out and he says, okay, well, let me take a poke around back there to see what's going on. And he got his tools together, leans me back in the chair, puts those cool sunglasses on me and begins to poke around and then just starts stabbing my gums. And I was like, okay, maybe he doesn't know that's where it is, but I'm going to make some noise. So I was like, <laughs> trying to grunt underneath it. And he just kept like pulling at that part with that hook. And I was like, dude. And finally I felt this release and he goes and he pulls his tools out, wipes them off. And he goes, okay, I found what it was. 
And I was like, well, you couldn't have just talked in the, <laughs> throughout the entirety of the process. And, uh, and then he explained to me everything. I'm listening to this. Like, as I'm, my jaw is throbbing, he explains to me the bone fragment that he had to pull out from Oof. my wisdom teeth, my wisdom teeth uh, procedure. They said sometimes bones will just dissolve oh, yeah, in the gums. Yeah, I had that too. It's crazy, man. He said sometimes they'll just dissolve, but this one took the last 15 years to come out of your <laughs> gums to work their way up. And as they were doing all that, as I did my, my new patient stuff, I also, they found a really tiny cavity, my very first cavity at 33 years old, 32 years old. And they were like, let's do a filling for that. So the next week I came back. So first experience was good. They fixed the problem, but bad in the sense of communication. The second week I come back and I was like, okay, well, I remember he's not very good at communication. I'm going to ask. And I said, are we just filling this? And what I meant by that question, that's on me is, Hey, give me the step-by-step -step of what's going on. And he was like, yeah, I'm going to get the, I'm going to get the, the, uh, whatever it's called the membrane that we're going to use to fill it. And we'll put it in there. And I was like, okay, cool. And then he leans me back, pulls out the syringe, stabs me a couple of times, doesn't feel good. And then he goes, okay, we're going to let that sit. And then we'll come back. And I was like, what? So they numbed me first, mm -hmm. didn't tell me that was the case. All he told me was, we're going to fill you, we're going to get the membrane ready, you put it in, and we're good. You've never had a cavity, so you no, have no idea. No clue, like. no idea. So they numbed the whole thing, and she was like, Are you feeling numb? And it felt like my lips were the size of a tangerine. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I was like, I'm going burger. <laughs> I'm trying to communicate. So and I asked if I could take a drink of water because I'm thinking, I just got the filling done. And she goes, Well, you're, you're probably going to be numb for a little while, so just make sure it doesn't dribble. And I was like, Okay. <laughs> and I took that drink really confidently, and it was fine. And about five minutes later, I couldn't even, like, I was so focused on the size of my lips that I was like, I'm going to die. My favorite thing is after that, you try to drink out of a straw and you're like, it's like, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> that's ridiculous. And I was like, I called, I called Hannah afterward and I was trying to focus so much on my mouth movements. I am going home now, <laughs> just trying to get everything out really quickly. But again, lack of communication. And so like, I was just, I'm formulating this thought of like, man, I, I know the medical field is, is, is a business, but I also like, I want so many people in the medical field to know, like you're interacting with humans, like do some human things because in the midst of me thinking about this, I've also heard several stories of people who specifically around babies where the doctors or the, uh, or the people who work in finance would handle them with just no tact at all. Just like I had a friend of mine who was, they, their baby had just ripped out like a feeding cord. The baby's throwing up blood. Oh. And this is, they're in the midst of calming that down. There's two other nurses in the room. It's him, his wife, his father-in-law and the baby. And they're trying to console the baby, but also try to get everything where it's supposed to be. And in the midst of this happening, and also he's probably exaggerating the story, but it's still in the midst of this happening, someone walked in, says, when you get a chance, Mr. Hatcher, we need to talk about how you're going to pay for your operations this weekend. And like, as this, he's like, as my baby is screaming in my wife's arms, somebody's tapping me on the shoulder and says, how are you going to pay for this? And I get, it's a business. I get that that has to take place. You couldn't have waited five minutes. You couldn't have said like, like there couldn't have been a, a note left. Like, Hey, nurses, let me know when things calm yeah. down a little bit so I can come back. Hey, yeah. the other nurses. And I had learned, and there's other situations as well. And so I just, I think that I'm trying to figure out, and I think this is going to be applied to all businesses is just, where is the, where do we divide the line of like treating people with clarity? Maybe decency is too strong of a word, but sometimes decency, clarity, treating people like they're people really isn't realizing like maybe this person doesn't know everything that they. I, I know what's your problem. Mm -hmm. I, know, I know what it is. Yeah. You're talking about industries. Dental's a little different, but you're talking about industries where there's not a lot of competition. Mm -hmm. So like in a normal, so where are they going to go? Yeah. If you went to a fast food restaurant, That's someone true. treated you really badly, what would you do? You'd go to a different fast food yeah. restaurant. Yeah, exactly. That's, that's exactly right. Yeah, that's, that's a really good a hospital in my garage. <laughs> that's right. We can heal people, man. Yeah. My wife's a nurse. What did I mean, her? think about it. Did you say we can kill people? Maybe. <laughs> think about the, the ludicrousy of this system. We pay health insurance, mm -hmm. who then they have a like a rigged system with how they pay the hospitals because also the government pays part of <laughs> yeah. the stuff too. With Anyways, it's a whole thing. But yeah. then the hospital has no recourse except for a conversation with the insurance. So like they can, they can basically charge you whatever they want to charge you or do. They're just going to say, Hey, here's what we have to do. You're not like, wait a minute, do we need to do all those things? Or can we just do this? And this? can you give me some options? It's not, that's not part of the process. Yeah. They do it. They charge the insurance. If the insurance is an issue, they charge you more in your premiums. You know what I mean? It just mm -hmm. goes up and up and up. So yep. that is why it is basically a, like a legalized monopoly. Mm -hmm. It's the only legal monopoly that I'm aware of. Yeah. Basically there's no competition yeah, you know, unless yeah, yeah. maybe you're in bigger areas where you can pick the hospitals, but still even in the yeah. midst of that, it's just, so that's why there's not a lot of pressure. Uh, you know what it is? It's going to the post office. <laughs> and they just, yeah, where, where else are you going to go? There's, I can treat no, you. There's yeah, no recourse for me treating you this way because 
Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Well, I was just thinking too, like, and I know it's not fair in conversation. That's why I'm saying I'm still formulating this. It's not fair in these conversations to think like <laughs> about, about the individual. But I think like, I agree with you in the sense of like holistically this, uh, they're not worried about treating people well because they're going to get the money in the, in the end anyway. I can think about that holistically. But then I think about this individual who's 26 years old, just fresh out of nursing school. Like i I doubt that the majority of the time that's the way they're thinking, but no, you're right. I'm processing as I'm talking about. Because, dentists are a little bit different. Dentists are a little bit different. I'm thinking about the, the baby situation but like, now. But it's still similar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, and like, I think it still goes back to your point because she wasn't necessarily trained to handle people a certain way. She has a job to do. She has a job to do, and that's how she was trained to do it. So therefore, I'm not going to go in there to please you. I got to please my boss because I got to keep this job. Okay. I'm processing. I was honestly, I don't want to throw every medical professional under the bus. My wife's one. No, no, I, no. There's a lot of great ones. I know. Yeah. That do she, a great job at mm-hmm. it. It's, it's just a different motivation. Exactly. You know what I mean? Yeah. So while well, I'll keep thinking about that, but Ryan, Hey Pierce, we're not talking about that today. What are we talking about? No, today? we're not talking about that today. No. Well, I mean, we did, but we're not going to continue to. <laughs> no. Yeah. Shut, shut up, Pierce. <laughs> I love you. Shut up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> had a pause there for a second. Yeah. <laughs> hey, okay, Pierce, today what we were talking about, uh, we were talking about wisdom um, and and what it looks like to behave from a place of wisdom rather than from a place of foolishness or wickedness um, and kind of what that looks like. But Ryan, how do we know the difference between wisdom and wickedness? Well, actually, Pierce... Great question. <laughs> I, took, I took an unnecessary amount of pauses there, but I was also trying to figure out, like, am I about to rip my eye out? <laughs> oh, don't rip your eye out. No, 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 no. It was just yeah. like, because I thought something was in my eye. I want to be more yeah. clear about that. Not out of, yeah, yeah. like, frustration. Yeah, I cast it from you. It was yeah. wicked. That's right. So your, yeah. your wisdom tooth grew way up. <laughs> yeah. <through> your... <laughs> Poking out my eye. Ooh, ouch. There's a lot more issues there. Yeah. I saw a photo once of a deer whose antler had bent around and came through. Isn't that eye. wild? Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. So anyway, that's not what we're talking about either. (laughs) What are we talking about today, Ryan? (laughs) The things that you can see on the internet. So we want to start today by saying that uh, we're going to be in the book of Proverbs. And the book of Proverbs is a wisdom book. It It is not a prescriptive book in the sense that it isn't giving us specific instructions on how to behave. It's giving us general concepts of wisdom versus foolishness. And in the first nine chapters of Proverbs deal with a woman called wisdom and a woman called adultery. And both of those are um, analogies of, of kind of pursuits in life, pleasures in life, things that drive you, motivate you, things that you desire or crave. And so the woman of wisdom, a person who follows that tract will have certain results and a woman, a person who follows the woman of adultery will have that tract and it will have certain results. And, and so it's interesting. I like Proverbs one. It says, it's one of my favorite verses. And it says in verse five, a wise man will hear and increase in learning and a man of understanding will acquire wise counsel. And so I like the idea that a wise man has as their aim to acquire more wisdom and a wise man as their aim heaps up counsel will bring counsel in right um he goes on to say two verses later that the fear of the lord is the beginning of knowledge fools despise wisdom and instruction so wise men who have wisdom are seeking more wisdom uh, seeking more counsel and fools despise wisdom and instruction Mm -hmm. and it's it's just such an interesting it's an interesting text um it it talks about how the fool in chapter one it says that the, the sinner, the fool will invite you to follow with them and lay snares for people. And it says they don't realize that they're laying snares for themselves. Mm. So one of the things that set out from the very beginning of this is that people who continue to make what we're going to call poor choices, because I, I think that this can constitute some of these choices could be defined as sinful choices, but I think some of it also can just be poor choices. There are things that lack wisdom that yeah. aren't necessarily sinful, but if you continue to make choices that lack wisdom, there's there's kind of a landing place for that. There's a result of that that's yeah. not beneficial. Um, yeah, because really, the I mean, tell me if if I'm off on this, but like it's always seemed to me like the the two women are more like two perspectives. The woman of adultery, I mean, he seems to be alluding to it as like this generic term of like, I guess sin. Maybe that's fair, but yeah. like it seems like there's some things. Maybe we attach too much um, terminology of like righteous and unrighteous according to how God views us rather than like 
like a generic idea of like the like this is not the the same context but like when i forget where it's in proverbs it's better to live in the corner of a roof than with a quarrelsome wife like yeah we wouldn't say like well if your wife's arguing with you a lot, you got to go sleep on the corner of a roof. Right. I mean, like we we tend to make it prescriptive instead of descriptive about it. And so like, maybe this is a more generic sense of like the, the woman of adultery is, is this sense of like, cause he he talks about her as this like alluring thing. This like, it's, she, she, she gives you honey, but it's actually something that turns into wormwood. I mean, like it's this, like she's sensual. She puts on lipstick for you. It's like enticing you in, away from wisdom seems like yeah versus- and and you don't know that the result of that is death right the result of that is is some kind sorrow. of harm yeah, yeah in life so i i do think what we tend to do is we tend to we tend to attach righteousness to the woman of wisdom and we tend to attach sinfulness to the woman of adultery mm-hmm. and i think while there might be some truth in that i think it's better to come back off of that like a step yep. and say that that wisdom has benefit to it mm-hmm. and the adulterous side has harm attached to it. Yep. And they aren't always exclusively issues of righteousness or sinfulness. Mm-hmm. Sometimes it's just a matter of practicality. Yeah. Um, one of the things that I think is very interesting is in chapter nine, so it's kind of been doing this contrast back and forth, which we'll go back and look at some of these places, but it's been doing this contrast back and forth with the woman of wisdom and the woman of adultery. And in chapter nine, it says, wisdom has built her house. She has hewn out seven pillars. She has prepared her food. She has mixed her wine. She has set her table. She sent out her maidens and she calls from the tops of the heights of the city. Whoever is naive, come in here. Him who lacks understanding, some of yours will say, uh, to the foolish, she says, come here, eat my food, drink my wine that I've mixed, forsake your foolishness and live and proceed in the way of understanding. So it has wisdom who has prepared this banquet, this feast, standing up on the heights and calling out to the fools saying, look, forsake your foolish ways and come in here. I've got food for you. I've got nourishment for you. And then if you go down to the end of chapter nine, verse 13, it says the woman of foolishness also called the woman of adultery throughout these nine chapters is boisterous. She's naive. She knows nothing. She sits at the doorway of her house on a seat at the high places. So both of these are in this high position in the city calling to those who pass by and this is super interesting because remember the woman of wisdom was calling the fools. And this says calling to those who pass by who are making their path straight. Mm. So mm. the woman of adultery, the woman of foolishness is calling to those, alluring to those who are seeking to make their path straight. And she says, whoever is naive. So same call that the woman of wisdom has turn in here. You who lack understanding, she says, stolen water is sweet. Bread eaten in secret is pleasant, but he doesn't know that the dead are there, that the guest of her depths uh, the guests of her are in the depths of Sheol. And and so like, there's this idea that from a practical standpoint, it, it, there are things in our lives that exercise wisdom and understanding. And there are things from our lives that exercise foolishness. And, and it's not necessarily a matter of right or wrong. Sometimes it is, yeah. depending on what we're talking about. I just, I don't want to throw that blanket over every single situation. Uh, but when when you persist in foolishness, when you, when you find pleasure in foolishness, then there's going to be a harm and a result that res, that comes from that. And when you when you uh, find pleasure in the wisdom of the Lord, there is going to be a benefit that comes from that. One of the verses that I really enjoy says this. This is from chapter ten, outside of our parameter, but it says uh, in ten twenty three, doing wickedness is like sport to a fool, and so is wisdom to a man of understanding. So back to chapter one. The wise person increases their wisdom. The thing that is sport, the thing that is entertainment for the wise person is continuing to grow in wisdom and learning Mm -hmm. because they know how wisdom can guard them. They know how wisdom can protect them. They know how wisdom can can take care of family, take care of your needs, put bread on the table. But it says that wickedness and in light of what we've said, foolishness are the two things that are used interchangeably here. Uh, Foolishness is like sport to a fool. So like... The, the the fool finds pleasure in their foolishness. The fool, sport, yeah. It's it, this is this is what's fun and entertaining, and like one of the examples we were talking about before we started recording is when I went to college uh, at Tech, and all the guys on my hall. I think there was I lived on a short little hall, and there was one other guy on my hall that was a Christian, and uh, and all the rest I became friends with. We ate dinner regularly, like we got to know each other really well, but most of them. None of them <laughs> were living for the Lord. None of them. And at 18 years old, Thursday nights in Lubbock back then was college night um, or ladies night or whatever. And so all the college kids would go party at the clubs on 
on Thursday nights. And, uh, and they would come back drunk. And it was really funny because they would always come to my room for whatever reason. And one guy came back really drunk and he was sweeping my floor. He, where's your broom, man? I need to, <laughs> I need to sweep your You're floor. Like, man, you guys need to drink more often. <laughs> uh, another guy laid on my floor and watched the ceiling fan. Mm. Um, another guy, uh, cause I was playing with throwing knives all the time at this point. And he was like, I want to try your throwing knives. And we ended up in the ER a little bit later, <laughs> uh, getting stitches for his hand that he had sliced <laughs> wide open. Um, but I, d I didn't agree with the way they were spending their time, but I sort of understood it at 18 years old. These people are out of their house for the first time and they're like, man, I'm going to do whatever the heck I want to do. I really struggle with people who are still finding getting drunk and forgetting where you are and that kind of, I, who are still enjoying that at 40. That's yeah. weird to me. Like it, it's like, what, what, why is that pleasurable still to, to not know where you are, to not remember to, and, and I just think like there are choices that we make, like we could, we could talk about Ephesians five, don't be drunk with wine, but be filled with the Holy spirit. The idea of being controlled by God rather than by these other things. But, but, all you have to do, all you have to do is look at what really pleases people, what they really delight in. And you'll, you'll see pretty quickly what their affections are. Like you'll see what their goals are and what their agendas are and what their motives are. And, um, I don't know. I, I think, uh, like you mentioned this a minute ago, Micah, it says, uh, talking about the adulteress, it, it says that the lips of the adulteress, this is chapter five, drip honey. She's smoother than oil in her speech, but in the end, she is as bitter as wormwood, sharp as a two-edged sword. Her feet go down to death. Her, her steps take hold of Sheol. She does not ponder the path of life. Her ways are unstable and she does not know it. So, so this is wickedness. She doesn't ponder the paths of life. She's not concerned about where she's going to land. Uh, I do find it interesting that it describes her as sharp as a two-edged sword. Um, Anyway, that's another talk for another time. But just prior to that in chapter four, it says the path of the righteousness is like the light of dawn that shines brighter and brighter until full day. But the way of the wicked is like darkness and they don't know over what they stumble. Mm. And, and I, this verse makes me think about the, I can't tell you the number of times that people have looked me in the face. They're seeking counsel finally or whatever. And they've looked me in the face and I'm like, man, I just, I just don't know why things are so hard right now. And I'm going, are you kidding? <laughs> like, and I start listing off all the decisions that they've made and all the things that, and I'm like, I, I know why things are so hard right now. Look at the 48 things you've done wrong. Well, look at the 48 things, choices that you've made, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. like, uh, it's funny that you said 48. Yeah. After you said you're 48. Oh yeah. 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 Maybe that's why it's in my head. <laughs> I've made one wrong choice yeah, every year yeah, of my life exactly, yeah. that has been really, really, really <laughs> wrong. <laughs> but like, what was it at one year old? <laughs> what was it? You, know, you don't want to know. <laughs> that, I one is, that one is. I pooped my mom's pants. <laughs> but uh, it's a pretty common occurrence. <laughs> yeah. But I just think like there there are people who have said to me, "Man, I just I just don't understand why this keeps happening." And and I can't think of a specific example. I wouldn't throw anybody specific under the bus right now, anyway. But like. I look at them. And say, I, I mean, I'll tell you the one we get a lot yeah. in counseling is people struggling financially. Yeah. And they're like, I just don't get it why I'm keeping going into this. And you're like, because you're spending more money than you're making. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I'm not saying that's sinful. I'm saying that's stupid. It's yeah. not, it's not wise. <laughs> yeah. I remember years ago I was helping somebody with their budget and they, they made the same amount of money that Michelle and I made, had the same age kids that we did. We had a two year old and a one year old basically. Uh, and, and they were making the same amount of money. They had the same basic, everything. It was the same and we were okay, you know, but they, uh, sorry, all of their bills were the same as ours mm. and their family size was the same as ours, but they made like $3,000 more a month. Mm. And so I knew that we were okay so that they should be like theoretically. So I was like, so where's this extra three grand going? And as we talked more, it turned out that they were spending between 2,500 and 3,500 a month at Walmart for a new TV or a new stereo system for the car or new this or like, <laughs> uh, well, we wanted to do this outdoor patio thing this last month. And so we spent all this stuff. Yeah. And, and I was like, well, <laughs> here's why you don't have any money, yeah, <laughs> you know? Spending it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And they, they were spending it like crazy. So that's without throwing yeah. anybody under the bus, there's an example of like where you, people have said, why do I keep suffering through this? Yeah. And you're like, but this is the decision you're making. Yeah. 
that is producing this consequence. Yeah. And I've had people, again, no one specific in mind, but I've had people who have come to me and were like, every dating relationship I've ever had has ended this way. And it's just, it feels like hopeless, you know? And I'm like, yeah. And every single one of them, you've chosen not to honor God mm -hmm. and you've entered into a sexual relationship and you've chosen to do this. And you've like, you want God to bless something that isn't, in, in that case, it's sinful, but like you, you want yeah. God to bless something that isn't at its core godly. Mm -hmm. How does that work? Like, mm -hmm. why are you surprised that these, that you are reaping what you sow, right. you know, mm -hmm. like, uh, and, and that's, that's what's weird to me is that like, um, there is there is a benefit to wisdom. There is a benefit to behaving wisely. And, and what I think really one of the things that frustrates me the most is the people who be like, "Well, you're just lucky." Hmm. And and I, I don't know. Maybe there are some areas in my life where I've been more fortunate than others. I think certainly that's probably the case. But uh, I'm not sure I would say that about your life. I don't know. It depends. It depends what you're asking about, right? Yeah, I mean, maybe like later in life, but at least not your childhood. It just depends what you're asking about. Yeah, sure, so, sure. Yeah, I yeah. get it. I'm just so, saying, like, I'm so thinking somebody, of all the somebody at some point is going to come to me and go, "Well, your life is more blessed in this way than mine." It's and just, I think it's funny to me that they're comparing because, like, <laughs> like you wouldn't say that probably the maybe pieces of it, but like what I'm saying is like, if you were picking, yeah, you wouldn't have said, "I'm going to pick all this chaos." No, <laughs> but. But one of the things that I've done, granted with the wrong motive, but one of the things that I have, have done since I was three is I have made it my aim to honor God. Mm -hmm. Now, the system that I grew up in was a moralistic system. And so I learned how to honor God morally, like not with my heart, but with yeah. the rules. But that's what I was taught it looked like. And I sincerely wanted to honor God. So I worked really hard to follow all the rules because my aim was to honor Jesus. And then as I got older and we started having more conversations in late 30s and now early and then early 40s, I was like, crud, <laughs> I've, I've been wrong about some things. Mm -hmm. But but my aim, my aim for my life, my aim for my marriage, my aim for my kids has been Jesus. And and I I seek to be wise with my money. Um it's not that there haven't been times that I've spent more money than we had. And, and I just told Michelle, I was like, golly, I looked over our credit card bill this past month and I was like, we ate out way too much this past month. And, and I realized like driving to this tennis match or driving to this track meet so and we're like, gas. let's just grab dinner on the way home. Oh, and food, you know, I know I don't want to cook. I'm tired. You know, and, and you do that 10 times in a month and four people and you're spending 35, 40 bucks a yeah. meal. You're like, holy crap, yeah, that's an extra quick. $400. Yeah. We don't have that, you know? Mm -hmm. And so that lacks wisdom, you know, but like it's just, I would, and see, those are like the nuanced things where I would say like, this is, I'm not even so sure that's, you would say that lacks wisdom. Like maybe what it lacks is, uh, yeah. I think the wisdom is what you just said. Like you recognize, oh man, we spent too much. That's not you doing the opposite of wisdom. That's you right. recognizing a situation and changing it, which is wisdom. You know so, what I'm saying? Let's put it in a different light because I think you're right. Somebody spending 400 bucks a month eating out does not necessarily mean you lack wisdom. Mm -mm. But if, if those choices that I'm making puts me in a situation where next month I can't feed my family, that lacks wisdom. That lacks wisdom. Yep. Or even like a, from a health standpoint, like mm. eating right. junk food every meal doesn't necessarily lack wisdom. Right. Although it's probably stupid. But if, if the doctor's like, hey, you got cancer, and you yes. continue to eat the same way, that lacks wisdom. Yeah. So here's where we're at, right? Like that's a great, that's a great point. Health food and like there, this will eventually take a toll on your body. Mm -hmm. This is going to hurt your body in some way. And and I think that that's where this conversation about wisdom, AKA adultery <laughs> from this perspective, not marital adultery, yeah, but yeah, from yeah. this perspective is an interesting conversation because most people don't think past today. Uh. And, and the unfortunate thing is the only people in Proverbs that don't think past today are the people who are pursuing folly. Interesting. But the person of wisdom, so if you get further into Proverbs, it talks about the person of folly not harvesting their crops in this season of harvest. But the person of wisdom harvest because it, the Bible says in Proverbs, in all work, there is reward. In all work, there is reward. And so the, the, the foolish one, the person of folly is like, no, nah, I don't want to do it right now. And then they lose their crop. Whereas the person of wisdom has their house filled with a storehouse, right? Of, of food. And, and so that I think is maybe one of the biggest differences mm -hmm. that, that the person who is wise is, act, is, is acquiring more wisdom because they're thinking beyond this moment. Mm -hmm. But the person of adultery, the, the foolish person is thinking about this moment 
And and so maybe that's that why answers I, your question earlier about like you don't understand people who just get trashed like in, as adults. Mm. And maybe that's it. Maybe that for them, it's they're like not they're, thinking further than this. They're moment. just thinking about this moment right here. This right moment now. of pleasure. Yeah. In Proverbs seven, it says that a young man went off to the adulteress's house and stood on the corner of the street near her house in the evening in the twilight hours, and that she came out and she spoke to him lovingly and and lured him back to her house. And that he does not know that an arrow will pierce, pierce his liver and that he'll die there because all he can think about in that moment is that moment, mm-hmm. right? That's all he's thinking about. Um, it, it's this, like, people know this verse. People have heard this verse. Uh, let me find it here. It says, guard your heart with all diligence for from it flow the springs of life. It's Proverbs 4.23. But people miss the context. And I'll be honest with you, after Proverbs 9 there's not a lot of context because it's a lot of really quick statements. Mm -hmm. Like there are kind of general ideas being repeated over and over in Proverbs 10 through 31 that you can build kind of a system of thought from, right? But this is wisdom. This is kind of an approach to life that produces wisdom. But in the first nine chapters, there's a little bit of context. And so listen to this. It has just said the path of righteousness is like the light of dawn that shines brighter and brighter until full day. But the way of the wicked is like darkness. They don't know over what they stumble. That's what makes me think of the people who are like, I don't know how I ended up here. (laughs) I'm like, golly, my son, give attention to my words, incline your ears to my sayings. Do not let them depart from your sight and keep my words and my sayings in your heart for they are life to those who find them and health to all their body. And then guard your heart with all diligence for from it flow the springs of life. Mm. So he says, listen to instruction, Mm -hmm. take hold of wisdom, and then treasure that wisdom in your heart, and then guard your heart. So that's where they get that phrase from. I'll give it to them when people say like, you got to guard your heart. You got to guard your heart. Like mm-hmm. if that's totally they, from Proverbs 4.23. But if, I, but if that's what they mean, I'm in. That's not usually what they mean. <laughs> that's, that's not sure normally what they mean because, because they have to take into account the verses prior to that. Yeah, yeah. And, and so the idea of guarding your heart because from it flow the springs of life, that's only true is if you've collected into your heart wisdom. Does, yep. that, does that make sense? You can't guard what's not there. Right. So, so you collect wisdom into your heart and then that guards you and that is leads you from light to light until full day. So like there, there is, there is wisdom. There is a, he consider the ant you sluggard. He says later in Proverbs, mm-hmm. he, he stored up plenty for the winter. Like let that be an example to you. He says the sluggard, meanwhile, won't even raise his hand from the dish to his mouth, which is, which is <laughs> so I funny, about that <laughs> you know? Uh, and then the sluggard, Feed me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the sluggard says there's a lion in the street. And the implication is being like, I, I can't do anything today. There's a lion outside. Like, <laughs> so the, the sluggard, the fool is always thinking about this moment and is, and is driven by today's pleasure. Whereas the person of wisdom has a forward thinking view. And, and so, for example, um, last year, there have been three different times since Michelle and I have gotten married that we have had to draw from our investments to help us get through a period of time, a mm-hmm. um, couple of months here and there. And, and we didn't have a lot of investments. We didn't even start investing until I was 37, 38. So only the last 10 or 11 years. But what was awesome is because we had done that, we had money that we could draw from to meet our needs in that moment. It sucks, but it's also awesome that you had it. Yeah, yeah. it does. It does suck to, cause you're like, man, I worked so hard to put that money away. <laughs> and then you pull it all out in a moment and you're just like, ouch. But it does help when you've, you've looked and you bought Apple at $58 and it's up 300%. And you're yes. Like, hey, it sucks to pull this out, but yeah. like, <laughs> but That's but nice. the thing is that because we exercised wisdom a decade ago, we were able to be okay last year. Yep. Mm-hmm. And and what happens is the there's foolishness, right? So like I'll tell you this, we uh we started investment accounts for each of our boys on their fifth birthday. And and we're we it's a custodi- a custodi- custodian <laughs> custodial account. Wow. I could not f- find that word in my brain. <laughs> you can put the in in there. Yeah. <laughs> custodian. 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 That's it, a custodian account. It's a custodial account that, that What did I say? He's like you did, you did it again, custodian. It's cuz custodial. <laughs> you can't even I do. Did. I can't even say the right word. I don't know what the right word is. <laughs> I don't know. It's Never a, mind. Forget it's it. A, it's a custodial account. Yeah, yeah thank custodial. you. Custodial. Yeah, you custodial. said custodial. <laughs> <laughs> I can't do it. There's got to be in there somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> Let's throw all the ends in. Yeah. So 
Michelle and I can't take money out. We can put money in, but mm -hmm. on their 21st birthday, it reverts to them completely. Our names will drop yeah. off the account. That's when they become a custodian and they can <laughs> yeah, get yeah. the yes. <laughs> <laughs> buy, their, buy themselves a month. I want to write them a card that says, congratulations on becoming a con custodian. <laughs> custodian. Right. Yeah. So the, the thing that's interesting is we just, we got a new financial advisor recently. Uh, she has taken over all the accounts for one who had retired. And we were talking and she goes, look, she said, I understand what you're trying to do here with your kids. Uh, she goes, it's really nice of you. She said, but they might not have the same goals that you have. And then when they turn 21, they might pull it all out to go on a trip. And I was like, yep, they could. Ah, that sucked because like, I'm trying to give them a leg up. I'm trying to get yep. them ahead of where I was so yep. that they're ahead of the game. Like I, I, I didn't start being wise with, well, I was wise with my money in the sense that I had zero debt. I've never mm -hmm. had any debt, but I didn't have any money put aside. I didn't have anything. And what's crazy is no one ever told me when I was 15 and I got my first job that if you would just put 25 bucks in some sort of an investment a month, that'll make a big difference yeah. for you in 20 years. Mm -hmm. um, the, the math, I saw this the other day. If, if you put it in a low yield whatever, I forget what account she was Probably recommending, something, yeah. Uh, if you put in a hundred bucks a month, which not every 25 year old could do, but that's where she started it. From 25 to 65 years old, if you put in a hundred bucks a month and a low yield, uh, and uh, what did you say? Mutual, Mutual fund. fund. Yeah, she said, she goes, you'll have about a million bucks at 65. She goes, if you wait 10 years to start, if you start at 35 instead of 25, you'll have 300,000. Wow because the the compound interest mm -hmm. right and you go wow like wisdom would say tell all of your kids start investing early yeah like is this system possibly going to collapse sure our confidence is in god but we live in this system for right now so for right now i'm going to play by the system the yeah. sluggard would say i don't trust the system i'm not gonna the, the i'm not gonna make any smart choices the sluggard would say <laughs> I'm going to drink this away, <laughs> yes. you know, yeah. or, yeah. Uh, I mean, like my dad, my dad, uh, the last 10 years of his working life, I think he was retired two years before he died. The last 10 years of his, of his working life made nearly half a million dollars a year. And wow. when he, when he died, had $225 in his bank account because he used all of his money on gambling. He used all of his money on alcohol. And there are a couple of things that would indicate he probably also spent it on hookers and cocaine. Uh, and, and so his view was today's pleasure. Mm -hmm. That was his view. Yeah. And, and not that I, I, I don't, I think I probably would have been like a little ticked off if he had left me, left me money anyway, just because like the way our relationship was, yeah. mm -hmm. <laughs> he, he squirreled away $3,000 in an envelope, uh, cash and left that with a buddy of his with instructions to give it to my youngest sister, Lisa. And it made her mad mm -hmm. she was like how dare he do that like what the rest of you guys don't matter he's like she's like this is dumb and so she used every bit of it to pay for his cremation she was like i'm not letting him have the benefit of like that's yeah. funny you know but uh but the point being like it's, it's amazing to me that people are like i don't i don't know why my life keeps why i keep stumbling i don't know why things are so hard and it's like man because you keep making unwise choices mm -hmm. it, like look my closest friends are the two of you Robert and Stacy and my wife, right? Mm -hmm. Like, so outside of my wife and my kids, I have four guys that I see all the time and mm -hmm. talk to all the time. And then I have my really good friends, uh, Jed and Lance Dockery and Ryan and Scott that I see way less often, but are still like longtime friends of mine, more than two decades. Mm -hmm. and, and, and you guys are my closest friends. I have surrounded myself with people who know and love Jesus. Mm -hmm. There's wisdom in that. Mm -hmm. And if you continue to surround yourself with people who are not people who are trying to pursue Jesus, like don't, Paul says for a reason in 1 Corinthians, 15, uh, not 15, but he's maybe 15. He says that good company corrupts, bad company corrupts good morals, mm -hmm. right? Bad company corrupts good morals. And, and we go, man, I don't, I don't know why I'm always in trouble. Like I, I have <laughs> never, I have never had to worry with you guys about being uh, accidentally arrested for something. You, you, know, you know what I'm saying? Now, <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> Just wait till they change the laws. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, but that won't be accidental. Because, oh, accidentally, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Because the reason that you and I will get arrested in the future is when people start making it wrong to stand up for Christ, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. That, and that'll be intentional and that'll be deliberate and that'll be wisdom. Right. Uh, which is why it can't be about being arrested, as right. you would say. <laughs> you know, like it's, it's the right reason behind it. But, but, 
when people, every time they hang out, I've had people straight up tell me, man, every time I hang out with that guy, we end up in trouble somewhere. And we, <laughs> and I'm like, well, then quit hanging out with that guy. <laughs> yeah, and they're yeah. like, nah, man, we have such a good time. And I'm like, yeah, you're only thinking about the moment. Mm-hmm. Um, you're only thinking about right now. And and it's just- That is an interesting point about the difference between the two. Yeah. The fool and the yeah. <clears throat> the wise man. The the fool's thinking about this moment mm-hmm. and the wise man's thinking about future yeah. moments. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, th- I think that applies to so much of life in general. Mm-hmm. Um instead of thinking just about the now because because to be fair to the to the allegory of of these two women in proverbs one through nine um i I get it the adulterous woman is alluring like it is alluring she's described as that yeah like there is honey there is sweetness there is like like there is something alluring about oh let's just let's open this can there's something alluring about sitting down in the casino and putting money into a slot machine and hitting a button and all those lights go off like crazy and you win a bunch of money. There's something alluring about that. I've never won a bunch of money. <laughs> At a slot machine or in general? No. On the slot machine. Uh, uh, slot. Michelle has. Slots It's suck. fun. Oh. I, I, I did, someone did teach me though yeah. about how to find the right slot. Well, mm-hmm. Anyway, so shouldn't be saying the right thing. <laughs> but like, they, they actually, point B, the reason I brought that up is I found out, oh, I forget what I watched, about the science behind slot machines. Mm-hmm. Like the way they do the lights, the oh, way yeah. that the oh, sounds yeah. are like, it is meant to allure you. It, oh, is, yeah. it is designed to draw you in yeah. because they know whatever the house odds, like that's the best house odds is the slot machines, I think. Or no, no, no. Mm. What's the best house odds? Is it roulette? Table games, yeah. Okay, anyways, point being, it's designed for that. So you walk in, like, you even walk past the casino. You even watch a kid that walks, like I've seen kids walk like, you know, through the hotel and there's a casino and their eyes light up because it's like literally drawing. There's something alluring sure. about that. And it is fun to sit down and hit that button. And it's like, and, and Mr. Moneybag spins and, <laughs> yeah. and it's like, just keep spinning and you're winning yeah. all like, there's something alluring about that. And I'm not making a case right or wrong, obviously no. for that. What I'm saying is, cause I think there's wisdom in both sides. Okay. But, but like what I'm just making the point, like, like there's something intentional about that being alluring. Yeah. Yes. A hundred percent. And, and one of the things, uh, the, the allure of it for a lot of people is that you don't have to work for it. Mm. There's no discipline required. Oh, there are people who go to play because they don't have to work. Right. There's yeah. no discipline that, that's required. That's the idea. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So if we, we have all played in a casino before and we have all watched people come in and literally cash their paychecks. Yeah. It's disgusting. And I feel so their, bad. Their, their mindset is, I just need once. I just need to strike it rich once. I can turn my... Uh, $200, $800, $2,000 paycheck into $20,000 if, mm-hmm. if I could just get lucky this one time. And and then we have watched other people come in, like people that I've sat at the table with who were in their 60s, early 70s, who were dressed really nice. They flew themselves over on their plane and they drop a grand and it's not a big thing and they're not trying to get rich. They're just having fun, right? Mm-hmm. And so what we, would, what we would argue is that for one guy, there isn't a violation of wisdom and for the other guy there is Yeah, mm-hmm. like, because, because it's, it's the intent of it. The other dude who's like, well, yeah, I, I ran cattle for 20 years and I did this and I like, he used wisdom to put himself in a position to have this kind of money. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. So we, we went last month, uh, to the opening weekend of, we were in Rudo. So for the opening weekend of the horse races at the very end of May and every year that my family and I've gone, we've taken the boys to watch the horses and they love to watch the horses run, walk in front of you and you get to see the horse and they'll pick it and they'll be like, that one seems really energetic. And so, uh, I know people are gonna be like, that's not wise to do this, you know, but like I give my kids each two bucks per race to go bet on a horse. They can't go bet on the horse. So I do the bet for them. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the minimum bet that you can do is basically two bucks. There's a mm-hmm. couple of ways around that, but, uh, you can do, no, no, no. The minimum bet is two bucks, but you can do a 10 cent bet that has all these different odds to it that equals $2. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, we go and we play and we watch the 10 races of the day and the boys have each spent $20. And uh, I think last year, Riker, the year before, Riker was the big winner. Uh, I think he came home with like 30, you know, something like that, <laughs> you know? And so he he bet 20 and came home with 30 and, yeah. and we had fun. And yeah. neither of my boys are going, man, dad, I really need to start gambling. <laughs> you know, yeah. like there was, we exercise wisdom in it. We're careful about how we do it. Like we just went and had a good day. Mm-hmm. But, but the thing about it is that I'm also not going to use, for example, Asher just got braces. Riker's about to get braces. We have money set aside for that. You know, what would not be wise 
is for me to go bet all that on the horse races to try to pay better for their braces. Yeah. Put it all on double zero, baby. <laughs> At the horse races? <laughs> is there a horse double a roulette, zero? They have a yeah, digital yeah. roulette machine in that. True, yeah. <laughs> but, but the thing about it is that, like, we have to be, we have to be, well, as Christians, let's bring this back around to Christ, right? That's the right thing to do. Uh, the, the wisdom that we have and the forward thinking kind of mindset that we have to have has to be about the return of Christ, the kingdom of heaven, has to be about the gospel. We have to think beyond this moment. And we have to, yeah. we have to think about how is, how is my behavior in this moment making much of Jesus? How, mm -hmm. how might this impact um, the way that I represent Christ tomorrow? Yeah. Uh, look, if, if I do something really stupid today that lands me in jail tomorrow, I can, I can witness for Christ in jail. But also, if I, as a pastor at the 46 and one of the, uh, one of the guys on Simpler do something really stupid that lands me in jail tomorrow. I've also undermined the gospel yeah. in a hundred ways. So can God use me in jail? Yeah, but because I didn't exercise wisdom, or I've also could be the situation. Yeah, unless they're putting you in prison for proclaiming Jesus. Right. Yeah, but I'm talking about stupidity. Yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. Just to be clear, because you didn't say that. Just right. Right. So up. if I do something stupid, yeah. sinful, that lands me in jail tomorrow, can God use me in jail? Yeah. Sure but I've also undermined the gospel in a hundred other ways. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And and so we have to, we have to think about like things that impact our marriage and we have to think about things that impact our kids. I'll, I'll tell you, I had a situation. I had a situation recently where I, I was, I was talking to one of my boys and I was just, I was just saying like, look, you need to, it was just a, it was a dumb situation. It wasn't a big deal. And, and I just said, okay, here's how you're thinking on this is wrong. You need to be more prepared. You need to, and I just gave them some advice. Well, they were very difficult on, they were hard on themselves. And they're like, I can't believe I'm so stupid. I'm like, this isn't, <laughs> this isn't an issue of being stupid. Yeah. This is an issue of you didn't make the choice that was best. Mm -hmm. This isn't sin. This isn't anything that dishonors Jesus. This is wisdom. And I said, and let me explain to you how this impacts your life going forward. Mm -hmm. yeah. This thing doesn't impact your life at all. It won't impact your life at all. Tomorrow, this won't matter at all. But what I'm trying to show you is that if you continue to make decisions like this, here's the long-term effect yeah. that it can have. Yeah. yeah. And, and and what was interesting is, um, I, I just kind of wanted, and this is a jerk move of mine, but at first my thought was, well, they they made the mistake, they'll figure it out. And then I thought, no, like, do I love my son or do I not love my son? And I love my son, so I, I embraced my son and I sat down and we talked through the wisdom of it. And I assured him that this isn't, this doesn't change who you are in Christ. This doesn't change that you're forgiven. This doesn't change how your mom and I view you. You didn't even do anything wrong. It mm -hmm. just wasn't the, what was best in this situation. And yeah. here's why. And that's okay. Because there are a lot of things that you can do that aren't best, that don't have any consequences tomorrow. Yeah. I said, so I want you to learn the lessons on things like this. Because someday, that if you choose something that's not best, it might have consequences for the rest of your life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so here's one of my concerns for people who are only thinking about the moment is, yeah, this thing might not have had any lasting consequences, but if you continue to make choices based on this moment, at what point will there be something that impacts the rest of your life? Which I think is what he, what he says in Proverbs, like there's this sense where like what you don't know yeah. is that there is metaphorically death coming. Death. Yeah. C can, can you mess with the adulteress and not get burned by it. He says in chapter six, right? He says that it's like a man heaping coals into his lap and mm -hmm. expecting not to get burned. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's like, eventually this is going to bite you. Yeah. You put one coal in your lap, you might not notice it, but once you start heaping, then it's like at some point you're like, holy crap, that's really yeah. hot. Mm -hmm. And and so with my son, I just took the opportunity to, to remind him like, this doesn't, dude, you didn't sin. You didn't dishonor Jesus. Yeah. You didn't, you didn't ruin the gospel in any way. I'm trying to teach you a lesson about wisdom. Yeah. And I think a lot of times we as Christians, you, I, I cannot remember what church I was driving to, but I remember being on the road um, in 2007, the fall of 2007. Um, sorry, fall of 2008. And I was, I was on the road and I was on the phone with you, Micah. And, and I said, it has dawned on me for the first time. I said, I have tended in my past. So I would have been that then... 33, I would have been your age, almost Pierce. Mm -hmm. um, and I said, I have treated people's lack of wisdom like sin. Mm. And 
I, I realized at that moment in the fall of, of 2008 that I can't do that. That sometimes lack of wisdom is just lack of wisdom. Yeah. It's not sinful. Right. It's just not what's best. But if we persist in ignoring wisdom, then we're putting ourselves in positions where there could be dire consequences yeah. and likely will be down the road. Yeah. I mean, I think that's just the reality of it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Your, your, your decisions produce consequences. I think one of the problems is that we sometimes as Christians try to attach what you were t- saying you've done forever. We try to attach like a perspective of holiness to wisdom. Mm-hmm. Um, and I know that there's sometimes a crossover. Um, sure. But I think that too often we try to make up our own rules for holiness slash wisdom. Sure. So, so for example, I grew up believing, I'm not sure why I believe this or who told me this or who convinced me of this, I grew up believing that casinos are innately wrong. Mm-hmm. Or, or gambling in general. In fact, I remember I went on a cruise in college with a bunch of friends. We just Charles Spurgeon really thought he say wicked. that. Yeah, it's funny. Freaking smokers. That's all they got <laughs> that's to right. say. Yeah, Anyways. you can smoke and drink, but you can't can't gamble. Though. Anyways, we went on this cruise, and I remember with all these college buddies of mine that we were all believers walking past the casino on the cruise, going, "I can't believe people do that." I'm in college, right? You know, believing that, and it it took a while for me to come out of that. But I, at some point, someone had convinced me of that. But there's there's nothing in the scripture that says that there is warnings against. Um, the wisdom of some of those kind of actions, sure. even alcohol, there's warning against, um, well, there's, there's explanation of maybe the, the negative effects that alcohol can bring, but we have too often tied those things to holiness. Like it's right. sinful, therefore, for me to drink alcohol, which is what people have believed for a long time. What's funny is those were cultural morals yeah. that we were interpreting the text through the filter of our cultural morals. Like the one yeah. question I ask, man, and it is so funny to watch Pastor Square when I ask him this, <laughs> why do you serve grape juice in the Lord's Supper and not wine? Yeah. And they'll say things that are all, every time, culturally based. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah. I, don't, I don't want people to be tempted by alcohol. Or they'll say all these cultural things and I'll ask him, I'm like, why do you feel comfortable changing the scriptures for this particular thing based on a cultural viewpoint? Right. Like, where's the, where's the end of that? Yeah. It's a slippery slope because once you start changing the scriptures for your cultural morals, yeah. at what point does it does it affect the rest of how you view, how you view the rest of scripture? So sure. like, I think for too often we've tied some of these wisdom ideas with holiness slash sinfulness instead of just going, that's wise and that's foolish. Right. Mm-hmm. And I think that is some freedom we should be able to have. Like we've told people forever, don't gamble, but we've not ever said, wait, you make how much money and you bought a brand new car? Right. Like mm-hmm. y- there are probably, uh, I saw this recently, 97% of the world's currency right now is debt. Oh yeah, I'm sure. Wow. And, 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 and what we're fighting for is don't drink and don't gamble. Mm-hmm. And we're not talking at all about people, how the, the wisdom of how they're doing finances. Right. Like as long as they don't drink, as long as, they, okay, as long as they don't buy lottery tickets, as long as they don't go to the casino, we're happy. Go do whatever yeah, you want to yeah. do. You just spent way more than you can afford to spend on a car on yeah. this stuff. And that's what I'm saying. Like that's, it's because we've attached a moral aspect to it rather than right. saying wisdom. If the goal is wisdom, then we say, listen, there's some freedom you can have not, not using your money badly. Right. And that freedom will probably produce the kind of life where you'll be in a place where you can um, be more generous. Sure. Where you can help people out more, where you can reflect the gospel more by how you take care of each other's needs within the body of Christ. You know what I mean? So yeah. like those are the conversations that need to happen versus like this is wrong or right. Right. One of my favorite things to tell I've had some people, we've shared these stories before about like us playing in the casinos, and I've had some people like really kick back, like you guys shouldn't do that. And I'll tell them this story about you, Ryan, which is so funny to watch them squirm when I say this. I was like, one of my favorite <laughs> casino stories with Ryan and Pierce is uh, cause Ryan always takes Ryan doesn't ever spend money during the year. Mm-hmm. Pierce and I do, but Ryan always takes a whole lot more money to the casino than we do. Mm-hmm. So we, yeah, we all have, I have, I get Michelle and I do an allowance basically. We get just, spending money and I take his whole year allowance to, so like yeah. Pierce and I have like a little bit of money to spend yeah. every day at the casino. <laughs> you have a little more usually than me. Yeah. Uh, and I think that's just a personal preference of mine. Like yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I, I cannot stand losing money. I, mm-hmm. I can't handle it. So like I'll, I might, you always like, have something on eBay or something that you're trying I to do. Buy I'll take like whatever. 50 bucks a day to play. And as soon as I win, I take that money and I buy something. Cause I'm like, that's what I've won. <laughs> you it's, you it, want that Puma it's, shirt or it's, whatever. It's, yeah. it's play money. So anyways, but, but I had, I had already spent all my money <laughs> that night. This one night, uh, Pierce was still playing Sometimes video poker back with all the other smokers in the back that's of the right, casino. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, so I went to get a Dr. Pepper from the room 
And I remember walking back into the casino and Ryan is standing between the blackjack table and the three card poker table. And one of the dealers who we'd kind of gotten to know um, was, was, had just gotten off and she was standing there talking to Ryan about stuff going on in her life. Like mm -hmm. Ryan's doing counseling with this lady in the casino. And, and then I look <laughs> over, he's got his hand on her shoulder and he's praying for her mm -hmm. in the middle. You just did ministry in the middle of casino. <laughs> and these people are like, no, that can't happen. And I'm like, you guys are idiots. You, you, you lost a place for the gospel to be proclaimed because of your morals that aren't even morals that the Bible says, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. say wisdom. That's fine. If you're uncomfortable, I'll say this. If you're uncomfortable with gambling, you shouldn't watch the PGA tour. Hmm. They pay thousands of dollars yeah. to get into this tournament on the chance they can win. And people are always like, well, that's skill. Have you ever watched uh, World Poker, World Series yeah. of Poker? Yeah. They have the skill. They have mm -hmm. a, a leaderboard. Like, stop making stupid, moralistic perspectives when it's just a wisdom issue. If you don't have the money, don't play. That's if you don't wisdom. have the money, yeah. don't buy the car. Because the goal is to live in wisdom in yeah. a way where my life is not held captive by the adulterous woman. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And and to to be the kind of person that that desires more wisdom. That like one of one of the telltale signs that you are a wise person is that you're seeking more wisdom. And yeah, you're, and you're. If uh, we didn't, if we went on a trip every year and none of us had any money, we wouldn't go play the casino. No, yeah, exactly. We wouldn't even go out to eat. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we probably I, wouldn't even take the trip. <laughs> <that's>, yeah. <laughs> I, I've, I've saved two years of my my birthday money and my allowance <laughs> so that I can. And you know what? There yeah. was a year a few years ago. I don't know if you guys remember this. It was uh oh, it was twenty twenty. Um, I lost like all my camps, all oh, my yeah, retreats. Yeah, yeah. We didn't like, I don't even, I mean, obviously I know that God everything provided shut for, down. Like, yeah. I, we didn't have any money and we went on our, on our trip and I remember getting there and I, I literally had scraped up. I think I had like 80 bucks. So I played $20 a day. Like yeah. that's, that's what I played. Yeah. And I played yeah. $20 a day because that's what you had. It would be yeah. stupid for you to do more to, to play money. I didn't have. So like, that's, mm -hmm. that's the idea is like we can attach morals to that stuff and it will give us the wrong perspective. It's, mm. it's what's killed. I think our, our culture our Christian culture where we have put these cultural morals above the gospel. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that, that that's killing us. Yeah. It's killing our, it's killing our representation of Jesus when instead we sh we could be able to, we should be able to say, I can take these lessons from Proverbs and wisdom mm -hmm. and apply them and watch how it makes me even more effective in how sure. I, I live for the glory of Jesus. Yeah, absolutely. And, and to be the kind of people that, aren't so short-sighted that we're concerned with only today's pleasures. Like yeah. uh, Psalm 1611 says that in the, in the presence of God is fullness of joy and in his right hand are pleasures everlasting. Mm -hmm. And if we, if our, if our heart, if our mind is set on the kingdom of heaven and the return of Christ, then those will be the things that we're seeking. And those will be the things that we find the most pleasure in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I met a guy recently, this is switching from finances a little bit, <clears throat> who's not a believer, disc golfer was playing a tournament. felt like the one tournament a year I get to play. Um, we were playing on the same card. He's a little older than me. I think he's probably like 46 or 47, pretty old, but I, uh, <laughs> uh, he, he's, he's a, he's, he's a pro and he's been in Texas a long time. Um, and he was telling me, he goes, man, I got, I got two kids. He goes, my oldest son is, I think in his early twenties, maybe late teenager. And he goes, dude, I totally screwed up. He goes, I was so focused on my career. He goes, I was gone every weekend. I would get off work every day and go practice. I was so focused on my career. He goes, dude, my son's life is a wreck. I missed his entire childhood because I was so focused on what I was doing in my career. He goes, at, at some point it hit him and he realized and he stopped. And he, I asked, because I'd asked him like, dude, why are you not playing as much anymore? And that's what he told me. He goes, mm -hmm. I have this other kid. He goes, I don't want to, I don't want to miss a chance to like be part of their life to yeah. affect their future. He's not even a believer in what he's exercising in that moment. Is he recognized that he messed up. And so now he's Im implementing wisdom as a parent. And I, man, there's, even as Christians, we do that. Like we're so focused yeah. on our career. We're so focused on um, all these other aspects of life that we forget, man, the core of who, who God has called us to be as people or husbands and wives and parents, yeah. you know, like we, we miss that for the sake of all these other fleeting pleasures. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like no career, no amount of money will ever be worth um, the time you get with your family. No, yeah. no it, way. It won't. And that's not, it's not wise. If that is you is in the forefront, then you are, unwise in how you were approaching life yeah mm -hmm. yeah don't waste it don't waste it and don't get wasted don't get wasted <laughs> there it is there it is yeah and it, and with the perspective of what you brought up earlier of just um 
if our goal as Christians is to live a life glorifying to Christ, then like wisdom comes into account of that. Cause we can, cause you can, in essence, I don't know. People, people in the world can look wise. Mm -hmm. Like they can do it. Like can, they can handle their money wisely in the casino. They can handle a lot of things like this, but there has to be an underlying goal of practicing wisdom for those of us as Christians is, right. is setting ourselves apart and not putting ourselves in. Good. And maybe even there's like, like someone's going to say it's unwise for you guys to even talk about that on the <laughs> podcast, but, but there, maybe there would be scenarios where it would be unwise to even have that conversation. Sure. You know, so like yeah. there's, I don't think that there's like a right and wrong in some of this stuff. Some of the stuff is like, what's the, the most beneficial way for me to handle this situation yeah. in wisdom. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I've, I've had people, I know we're wrapping up, but I've had people yeah. tell me when I do premarital counseling, one of the things that I do, I always give the couple the option a couple of weeks before they get married to have a talk about sex. Because I, I think that it's so interesting that we'll talk to couples about how to budget money and we'll talk to kid, uh, couples about how to raise kids and we'll talk to mm -hmm. couples about how to be involved in church. And then we just, as Christians go, just figure out the sex part. Good yeah, luck. Yeah, yeah. We've been telling you your whole life it's a sin and it's bad, but good luck figuring it out. Go figure it out, yeah. And, and so one of the things that I'll do for couples that it, who I'm doing the premarital counseling with, I'll say, look, we can have that talk if you would like to. And I've had people tell me, man, that's so unwise. What if they go and have sex, you know? Oh, and, you mean like before they- Yeah, before married. they get married. And I'm like, <laughs> well, okay, yeah. But also like, I'm, I don't think it's unwise because I'm trying to help them have, enjoy marriage. And so like, it's funny to me that like people- I don't know. It's funny what people will say is wise or unwise or uh, yeah, based like off preference pe and stuff. people. So I am a more conservative investor than you are in part because I have not taken the time to look into, uh, um, not crypto. What do I want to say? It's not crypto. Blockchain. Thank you. Blockchain is always what you're talking the about. Technology behind crypto. Yeah. Yeah. And so you're always talking about that. And I believe that you have information about that, that I certainly don't have, but I also have not pursued it. Right. Mm -hmm. And so you have an investment plan for you and I have an investment plan for me and they're different, but both of us are seeking in our families to exercise wisdom yeah. so that we can put our families in the best yeah. possible situation. And it is a good point. It's, it's wisdom in terms of what you're able to process and comprehend. Yeah. Mm. And, and wisdom for me looks different than wisdom for you, mm. but both of them have at the heart the same. We're well, thinking beyond today. Yeah. Point being like my, I think a better example is like investment properties. Yeah. Mm. Like your, your concept is like, you, you're not. You're not going to go in and flip a house and rent it. No, I'm because not. you don't know how to do that. You no. could if you spent the time. Yeah, to you don't feel like you could, but I'm saying like there's enough information out there <laughs> no, no, for no. you to learn it, the process. And, no, from a practical standpoint, I could. I have enough people in my life like you that I could ask questions to. I could watch enough videos. Um, but it, I was telling Michelle the other day, I was like, I need a third revenue stream, and she was like, What? And I was like, With all my you heart, gotta get to five. Yeah, with all my heart, I really want to be published traditionally. And I have a couple of things that I've been working on and writing. And um, none of them are Christian right now. They're just short stories mm -hmm. and some some books that I've written for that's the cool. boys. And, uh, and, and so that's something I want to pursue. And in my mind, that's something that in my 60s is going to pay for, help pay for my grandkids and other things that yeah. I want to do. Yeah. And, and so that's me thinking that's now about 15 years from now. Yep. That's what I'm mm -hmm. doing. And that's the, uh, is it Proverbs about um, saving up wealth for your yeah, yeah. children? Yeah. I don't remember where that is. Yeah. Uh, it's Proverbs. And I think there's one in Psalms as well. But there's, again, not a rule, but yeah. there's yeah. wisdom to that. Yeah. It, you're not going to try to go write several books and get them published. Nope. You're, you're going to do other things. I'm and, not even, I, I think there's a better chance of you remodeling a home. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, I can't read. just exercising wisdom and exercising, having, I think it's a genius point you made that I never considered that before that the, the fool thinks about today yeah, and short the wise man thinks about the future. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Short sighted, which is why the wise man gains more wisdom mm. and, and, and it, wealth. Yeah. And, interesting. And happiness and the wise and man, peace. It, it, that is pleasure to the wise man. Yeah. It's sport. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But his, his benefits, he's, he's sowing seed that will produce fruit and then the the fool is like, no, nah, I'm just worried about today. Uh, these, yeah, we talk about investments. Us oh, yeah. three. Mm -hmm. Yeah. For us, that's sport. Yeah, it is. Sure, it's yeah. super fun. And, and I love there it. are probably people who talk, your dad, who would talk about <laughs> hookers and cocaine as sport. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's true. So here's, here's a quick example, and it's ludicrous. Mm -hmm. It is absolutely ludicrous. And I feel really, really sorry for my youngest sister, but in my, la my dad's last few years when he was just horrible, he would not call me or my other two sisters because 
I think in his mind, we all three were old enough to see him for who he really was. But when he left my mom and they divorced, my youngest sister was too young to be aware of why. Does that make mm. sense? So he always just assumed that she just continued to remain ignorant, which is dumb because she's probably the smartest of all of us by far <laughs> and, and like super highly intelligent and just anyway. And so she knew what was going on eventually, right? But he would call her from time to time when he was really drunk and he would complain about this and complain about the other thing. And one time he called her and he was, he was drunk and he complained about how these hookers came to his hotel room with cocaine and they spent the whole night in his hotel room partying with cocaine and all this other stuff. And he was like, yeah, that was weird. I don't know how that happens. Um, and I'm like, I do. Yeah. <laughs> I can, I can guess <laughs> like I have stayed in hundreds of hotels and that has never come close to remotely <laughs> yeah. happening. Do you know why? Because I operate in wisdom. I'm not a yeah. fool. You're not paying hookers to come to your room. I'm not an idiot, right? Yeah. And, and so my dad's over here going, well, I don't know how that happened. And it's like, <laughs> why yeah. am I naked? <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> what happened? What happened? Because <laughs> you're a fool, yeah. you know? And, and it's like, it's just, it's funny to me. It, they stumble in the darkness and they don't know why. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Yep. Um, but the path of the wise is lit up day after day until full day comes like mm -hmm. it's we know where we're going we know what we're, yeah. we're walking into i think it's so. such a great conversation because we, we've said this a lot as we talk through things like there's there's a difference between um like right and wrong and wisdom sometimes yeah mm -hmm. you know like we would say to someone like i don't think that's wrong but i think it's unwise yes yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and that's what shifted for me 15 years ago because mm -hmm. i used to just be like you're wrong yeah mm -hmm. and now i've realized look I get that this is not sin. I get that this doesn't like, but golly, you need to be careful. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah, there's a better way to go about yeah. this. Yeah. yeah. Sorry for starting that all over again. No, you're fine. <laughs> People are just like, how do we end up here? <laughs> what happened? Golly. <laughs> so, so I was in my hotel room, right? All of a sudden, hookers, cocaine. <laughs> I hookers, look around, cocaine, what, and whiskey. What's what going on? <laughs> what happened? It's like, that was an accident. <laughs> it was like, they just came to the wrong room. Yeah. Okay. Sure. <laughs> but, <laughs> but they stayed the whole but night. But they stayed the whole time. They never went and found the right room. They just stayed in my room the whole time. Oh, man. It's ridiculous. I don't know how that happened. You know who's not ridiculous, though? You know who's not? Steven. Esteban. Esteban. The Vanilla Man himself. Go Hot follow Cheeto. at the Garden Audio. He is the custodian of this studio. <laughs> That's right, the custodian. I could not studio. say that word. No, no, no. We all got... That was ridiculous. Con. Con, Constodial. <laughs> Constodian. Anyway. Uh, yeah, go check out Steven at the Garden Audio. While you're over there, we are at Simpler yeah, Check Pop. him out. Check him out. Whatever you do, just check him out. Let him know. He's looking good and things sound good. You uh, need to get him to post a picture of him in short shorts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like 1970s basketball short shorts. Right, he can, can shave VM into his chest hairs as Vanilla Man, and he's just yes. wearing white shorts yes. with the Cheeto dust on the shorts. Oh, I love it. <laughs> uh, so awesome. while you have that mental image in there, go ahead and swing <laughs> over to Instagram and social and uh, Facebook and follow at Simpler Pod. It's a good place to get in, get in contact with us um, to reach out, see what what topics you want to hear about next, to see um, how is the perspective shift from you concerning wisdom and sin or wickedness concerning these things? Well, is, is, is there a perspective shift there? Was there a perspective shift there? We'd love to hear your story, just coming to learn more about some of these things. Um, and wherever you are, be sure to leave a like, share the podcast wherever you can. It helps the algorithm, helps boost Simpler um, to be, uh, like I said a few weeks ago, if you search for Simpler Pod, there's now another podcast that has Simpler in its title that is mixed in with us as well. So the more that we're searched for and liked and things like that, that kind of helps the algorithm out to show that people want to see and hear from our podcast. Um, we appreciate you guys. We love you guys. And as always, keep Christ's core. What could be simpler than that? See y'all next week. Peace.